All right, guys. Well, last week you saw me unbox this thing live. This is the first act custom shop DC nine. As I've written just about the rarest guitar ever, at least the rarest guitar that I have ever looked for in my lifetime. It took me about 13 years to find one. I started looking for them sometime in 2010 or maybe 2011, something like that. Um, very difficult to get a hold of one. And I finally was able to pick one up. And if you didn't catch it, you can watch the full unboxing from last week over on the channel where we I unboxed this thing, looked at it for the first time. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, we were unable to get any sound out of it at the time. But that was remedied here this past week with some contact cleaner. As I discussed, the, uh, the guitar has a lot of oxid oxidation, or at least had some heavily oxidized frets and a lot of oxidation on the hardware in general, uh, which actually results in a really cool look, kind of an aged, it looks like an old Les Paul, you know, 70s or 60s Les Paul Custom that you often see with gold hardware and the yellowed binding and, and whatnot. But couldn't get it to work, so uh, I wish I would have thought of it during the stream, but just grabbed some contact cleaner. Uh, for some reason, I figured there was something uh, like a, a loose solder joint or something, but it was actually just uh, an oxidized output jack, so um, just spray some of that contact cleaner on the, um, the quarter inch and just kind of push it in and out. I sprayed some in the jack and now it works well. So, um, so that's good. Hope you guys are here. Hope everybody's having a good uh, Sunday morning. It is early, I know, but uh, let's see, is the live chat on? There we are. What's up guys? Connie, Josh, Barry, what's up? Bill, what's up, man? Yeah, so anyway, so this week I spent some time that, like I said, the frets were heavily oxidized and uh, I went through and polished them up, cleaned up the fretboard and have just kind of gotten used to it. I restrung it, so it's in C standard tuning, which is the tuning it was set up for, actually. The guy got it from, John, if you're watching, thanks again, man. Um, he had it set up, I think, originally with 11, 11 to must have been a 56 or something like that in C. And so I've got it right now with, uh, these are all unison, so the same strings, unison pairings rather than octave pairings or anything like that. Um, I've got an 11, a 14, uh, 17, I think, um, or 11, 14, maybe it's 19, and then 30, 42, 52. So 52, 42, 30, 20, I think, and 14, 11. And so it's been playing, it plays really good. Um, it's taken a bit of time to get used to the added tension on these strings. I was initially gonna drop them down to say 10 and a half, 13 and a half, and uh, maybe 18 or 19, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that anymore. One unique thing about this guitar compared to all the rest of the DC models I've owned is it's actually 25 and a half inch scale which um, which is obviously really nice for this uh, nine string because you got to run the lighter tension here on these these uh, plain strings to kind of lighten the load and uh, it helps be in that longer scale I guess uh, you could just run the lighter strings I guess you make up for it in tension either way but uh, you can run kind of lighter strings than I'm used to like you, normally in C I, I'm I'm 12 to 54 or 12 to 56 Whereas, like I said here, I'm 11 to 52, and it feels really good. Uh, Josh, unison pairing versus octave pairing. Like on a 12-string guitar, you'll they'll pair the strings as octaves, so the strings are an octave apart. You know, you'll have the kind of the wound string and then the plain string, and they'll be a full octave apart. Whereas this is just doubled up strings: 11, 11, uh, 14, 14, 20, 20, 30, 30, 42, or sorry, 20, 20. 30, 42, 52. And uh, so yeah, it's got some interesting, an interesting pickup configuration as I've kind of figured out. Obviously this is, this one meters out at like 14 something, this one at eight something, and you can't really get the middle. But what I think the middle, what I think is going on is this, 
this volume and tone controls the bridge, this volume and tone controls the neck, and then I think this P90 style middle pickup is just kind of straight through, full volume, full tone, but when you're in the bridge position and you turn all the, if you turn all the volumes down, I think you still kind of hear this pickup a little bit, so it's hard to get no volume out of the guitar at all. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's what what I think's going on. Like I said, it's taken a bit of time. It actually holds tune reasonably well. Uh, it's not perfect, but uh, I've got some some of the Nomad Music Nomad um, nut lubricant in there has helped, um, and that's that's kind of why I'm hesitant to go down anymore and string gauge on it. Um, but uh, yeah, so so that's you know that's about. It, I've taken some time, like I said, to get to get used to playing it a bit, and I've really, really liked it. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, the uh, what are the other different things? Obviously, the headstock's really big on it, which I think is a cool look um, that differentiates it from some of the other DC sixes I've got uh, that have a more traditional, smaller style headstock. This has a really big headstock, not just long but also wide, which gives the guitar kind of a beastly look. And I spent some time, I told you guys I was going to play some Death Is This Communion um, riffs. And so I actually went on Pike's Patreon. If you're not a member of Matt Pike on Patreon, you should check it out. Because he's done lessons for so many of his songs. And uh, he had a cool lesson where he used his nine string, which he hasn't played live in a long time. But he did Death Is This Communion. So I spent some time learning those riffs. And uh, yeah, Eric, it is a wild wiring harness. It's... Uh, it's different. I think that's how it is anyways. That's what it seems like to me because anyways, you guys probably want to hear it since I've made you not hear it for so long here.
So there it is. Uh, yeah, so that what I'm playing is uh, playing the nine string through a Does It Doom Baghdad into the Mad Amp. Um, I think the Baghdad does that that high on fire tone pretty killer. Um, we sold out of those yesterday, so um, it will be a while before we get them back in stock, unfortunately. Um, So yeah, and, and just to get, I guess, to get a better idea for what the doubled strings sound like on leads. Yeah, so that's kind of what the doubled strings sound like. It's a really, obviously there's no other effects going on here, right? I'm just going guitar, Baghdad, amp. And when you play the uh, the double strings, it just, it's it's got that kind of chorus uh, sound to it. And so they kind of, you know, go slightly in and out of tune as you bend and whatnot, just kind of. Um... <laughs> Thank you. 
some was residual, but I don't think that's kind of meant to be like that. So. Um. Yeah, so question, any info about the Pike Warlords? Well, if you've been following or if you've checked out again Matt's Patreon, he's posted some pictures of the uh, signature Warlords we've been working on with him. Um, we've got really nothing, no, no official information yet, but uh, Matt is playing the guitars and he does like them, and I bet the next time you see High on Fire play, you'll see one of those uh, Pike signatures in action. They're pretty badass guitars. Um, but if you want to see him, he's got uh, a pick and I think a couple picks over on p patreon.com slash Matt Pike. Um, worth, <laughs> worth checking out in general. Like I said, Death is This Communion, which I was playing. I learned from one of the videos that they did. Super, super cool over there. So check that out. Um, it looks better than it did when I opened it. Yeah, I cleaned it up. Um, spent some time just, like I said, polishing up the frets. It really didn't need much in terms of setup. It played great. I didn't adjust the action or intonate it or anything. Uh, just just uh, took the strings off, conditioned the fretboard, polished the frets. I hit the um, kind of polished up the finish with the, with some uh, finish that or some polish that's good for matte finish guitars. And that's about all I've done. I've played it a ton this week, uh, which has been fun. Just kind of different, right? After playing guitar for forever, six string guitars, all of a sudden you have a nine string guitar. It's different, um, but cool. And, uh, yeah, it does, it does sound awesome. Have we thought about making nine string warlords? Yeah, I mean, sure. We've talked about it from way in the beginning. Um, you know, I guess it's just, you know, is that something that we think people would want? If you want one, let us know. Um, I think it's something we've thought we've talked about many times. Um, now that we've got one of the originals here, you know, we can, uh, we know kind of how they were done. Not that it's that complicated anyways compared to a six string, but, um, you know, one of the complications, I guess, is the bridge. Like these bridges were custom made for these guitars. Um, and they are set up to do nine strings, whereas something like that wouldn't be an off the shelf product. So we'd have to decide how we would do that, whether you, we would use 12 string bridges or, or have to make our own or whatnot. But that's, that's about the only complication other than making the, you know, getting the headstock set up, um, to be larger, as I said, to accommodate the additional hardware up here. Um, otherwise it's the same guitar, right? Yeah. And I've, Eric, you mentioned that like the old, um, I've seen it done that way. I've seen only, I've not seen just, just the high, the first string doubled, but I have seen just the first and second doubled, which would be cool too. Um, and I've seen BC Rich used to do those 10 strings where they would double the, uh, the, the uh, fourth string as well. So there's some of those out there. Um, it, even affordably, you can get one of those old 10 strings. Um, not even old. I think they still make them. Is it hit hard to hit the double strings? Not really. Uh, if you've ever played a 12-string acoustic, that's what it feels like. And... Uh, interesting uh sound but no they're not hard to hit they do um they are hard harder to bend at first like i said it's taken a bit of getting used to but um i have the strings here to go down about a half i was gonna go to like um 13 and a half or uh a 10 and a half 13 and a half and maybe 18 or 19 here but i don't know that i'm gonna do anything now it's kind of it feels fine i've gotten used to it and i just think i'm gonna have more tuning issues um if i go down on string gauge, which I don't, I don't have particularly um, significant tuning issues right now.
Like there's the doubled strings we've been playing I haven't tuned up. So not bad. Um, yeah, I finally made it home. I feel like it's been a hunt trying to get my hands on one. Hey, Romaine. Yeah, I mean, I, I have for sure. It's been uh, like, you know, at, just after searching for ones for so long, I'm kind of stoked to get one that has a bunch of playware on it. It's just, it's already played in, you know, it's already worked in and ready to go. It doesn't feel like a, a brand new guitar feels. It feels like a guitar that's been played. Yeah, the, the dice inlay, I, I don't know if I'm thrilled about it, but it doesn't bother me, that's for sure. I don't know what it means or why you would get that. I try to, I'm trying to think, you know, I've, I've asked people like, why would you get a pair of dice? Like, was that, a, it must have been a custom order for someone. I'm sure someone will pop up eventually and, and let me know why that happened. Because someone knows somewhere, whether it's one of the guys um, from the custom custom shop or, or maybe the person who had it built for them. As far as I heard, it went to, New, it was bought from someone in New York on eBay, I believe, in 20, um, 2013. And uh, then it went to Texas, where it lived in a very humid environment for the past 10 years, which is why all the hardware is so heavily oxidized. But the, the second owner said when he got it, this was there, and uh, some of the playware on the back of the neck was there, but he said not all of it. Just uh, He said he contributed to that some for sure. Um, and I, I don't know, I try to think, like it just seems like a weird place. I feel like most playware should be more up here. So I don't know if it's... If it's factory aged or not, it's a weird place to have wear. It wouldn't, it wouldn't, I don't know. Maybe someone's mechanics would have their arm there, but I don't think mine would sit there. How high up is the presence? Um, it's just below noon, so like, you know, just, just a tick below noon. Has Matt seen it? I, I haven't shown him, but... Uh, I'm sure he would dig it. I mean, he's got, he's had one, right? Like, I do know, like I said, he's been stoked on the new um, signature Warlords we've been doing for him. Um, I ju we just shipped the last, last one to him uh, last week. So now he's got all three, which are just, they're different uh, colorways that we're doing. Different finish options, really cool. They were all Matt's kind of spec. And uh, like I said earlier, you can check them out at, uh, patreon.com slash Matt Pike. He's got picks, plus he's got lessons on shit loads of, of songs that are really well produced. And that's, I, I love just jumping on. There's just so much you can learn from that guy. And I feel like if you go, like he's so open in sharing how he like thinks through things and you know how he came up with things, what bands or, or what type of riff or band he was listening to when he wrote certain riffs. Uh, I feel like he's very open and 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 giving with all this information and it's just it's crazy to just go watch him teach these songs like he just learned so much so i would highly recommend it um so how do i i get all these guitars similarly now as people when anyone has one and they go start looking them up first at custom shop i'm usually the first one who pops up with a ton of content you know because I've, I've owned so many of them and so i just had someone reach out to me on instagram dm to see if I was interested in, in making a deal on it. So we did. Um, uh, I don't know. It's, you know, you see, you see all the side, you see all the, yeah, it's not really like a pair. It's like dice that are, have rolled and they look, they're identical. And you see the one, the four and the two on each of them. So it's like, there's a pair, you know, it's not really like you can pick a side that the, the dice are sitting on or anything. Yeah, that's true, Eric. Maybe if a person played really high, I don't know. I still am not, I'm not sure if it's, I'm just not sure if it's factory aged or if it's, um, I mean, it's definitely been, you could tell the finish was factory dulled at least. Uh, just the way, you know, you see the fine like micro, you know, you can see the direction that the sanding, you can see the direction of the sanding. 
So it was definitely something like that was done, but um, all the hardware aging is authentic. You know, the guy said it's from his the humidity in, in the Texas area where he lives. He said all his guitars oxidized like that. And the, the input jack was so heavily oxidized I couldn't even get the guitar to play during the unboxing. So um, took care of that, and now it's, it's playing pretty good. I can still probably mess with the jack and get it to stop working if I want, but... Yeah, so the, the dice show just one, two, and four on both of them. Like, you could see the three sides of the dice. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but... Yeah, that's true, right? All the, all the play wear up here. There's no real significant fret wear or anything on it. I mean, it's got the, the big ass first act jumbo at like, they're like, they must be like ultra jumbo or something. They're just huge frets. Yeah, it's it's definitely fun, you know. I've been I've like I've said I've been into these guitars and hunting these guitars since since about 2010 or 2011 and uh I never it's strange cuz I think it was after the shop closed because I never by the time I was trying to figure out if they would still take orders, it's like they they weren't taking orders. But it didn't seem like the sh the shop was fully closed down at that time, but you you just definitely couldn't place an order and uh None of these have come. I've seen, like I said, I've said before, um, there were one of these that I saw come up for sale on eBay in around like 2012 or so, maybe 2013. And besides this one, I never saw this one come up, but the guy said it was an eBay purchase, so I missed that one. But there was one that came up. It was a clone of the Mastodon one that Brent played. And uh, I woke up, I went out, I was going out with my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time. We had just started dating and we went out on a date or something. And I woke up in the morning and it was it was in like sold listings and I could I just couldn't believe it. But uh, so that's the one I missed. And then this one apparently sold on eBay shortly after that because it was in 2013. Yeah, they might be Dunlop 6000. I mean, it all my first act guitars have these huge frets. Um, and it's not a bad feel. You know, it's nice and playable as long as you're not too heavy handed and makes things go sharp. But I'm really not. Um, I'm pretty, uh, I don't feel like I am either. And with my picking, I have to almost be more heavy handed with my picking hand. So yeah, anyways, I'm happy I've become the person that uh, people like to contact when they have a first act custom shop guitar for sale. It's the DCs always, but, uh, you know, occasionally like uh, some of the other custom shop stuff, people will reach out to me about and I've I've passed on some of that. But uh, some of that's really cool that and, and I would pick up if I saw the right one. Yeah, the snake eyes are pointing up towards the headstock on the dice. It's like the uh, the fours are facing me, the twos are facing down, and the snake eyes are, are facing the headstock. Hey, there's John right there. Jaggerwocky Zero. John was the previous owner of this awesome guitar. And he was kind enough to reach out to me uh, to see if I was interested in taking it off his hands, and I certainly was. And I'm stoked that we came to a deal and that I've been playing the shit out of it. It's been a lot of fun. Did Pike ever say why he stopped playing the nine string? Uh, he's never mentioned why. I think he, he did mention that uh, he's just struggled with keeping it set up and having to restring it and and keeping it in tune and things like that um but i don't know if that's ultimately why he stopped playing it um 
but like I said, it was cool to see him do that episode on Patreon with Death Is This Communion and him get that guitar out again, um, just because it had been so long since uh, since you could see him playing it at all. Hey, Ryan. What's up, man? How's it going? Yeah, you're right, man. Uh, the Playware, it's just so, it's such a strange place. But maybe, maybe someone did have it and play it high. Like, again, it's like if I were aging a guitar, though, I would probably have put it in a more traditional spot for Playware. So it's just hard to say. I don't know if this thing was factory aged or not. Certainly a good amount of the aging is not factory, but uh, some of it definitely is. <laughs>
Uh, yeah. Any plans for restocking the Doom Saw? Yes, we have, uh, so we're currently building some new Doom Saws, some new Doom Casters. Um, like I said, the Baghdad just went out of stock yesterday. We've been building, we've been building those and building those and trying to keep up and, uh, finally are totally out of parts. So, uh, more PCBs and, uh, we'll be back with, um, with some more Baghdads probably in a couple months. But Doomsaw, I think, will be in October, late October, Doomsaws and Doomcasters. The Giza and Baghdad probably sometime after that, um, obviously. Uh, hopefully the Baghdad and Giza we can have uh, sometime this year. November or December would be my guess. Um, one of them may, hopefully Baghdad's in, in November, late November, call it. But yeah, Doomsaws, Doomsaws, we we are getting enclosures done right now um and so uh yeah we'll see we'll see when we get those back out but uh do we think we'll have any black friday sales we usually do something for black friday yeah we usually do something for black friday and cyber monday it's really the only sales we run for the year um but we try to think of something fun and, and something that's a good discount. Um, I think uh, two years ago we did like a big sale on the Sabathi Fuzz, a deep discount. And then last year I think we did a big discount on Doom Boards. I'm not sure what we'll do this year yet, but uh, I'm sure we'll do something. And we usually do, like I said, something on Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So for that whole four-day weekend, it's really the only sale we run. But we try to make it something cool and something a nice discount for everybody. Yeah. Thanks, Gary. Yeah, man. I'm really stoked with it. Like I said, I've been playing it a lot and having fun with it. I was, uh, I've, I've changed the strings on it a whole bunch to try and figure out what I wanted on it. Because um, like I said earlier, it's 25 and a half inch scale, which is interesting because all of my other first act DC guitars are actually 25 and an eighth inch scale. So kind of in between that Fender and Gibson scales. Um, but this is 25 and a half, which is cool. So a little longer. Um, more tension, which is which just in general, I don't typically play 25 and a half inch scale guitars as much. So I had to had to adjust and then adjusting to the uh, the unison paired high strings was a bit different. Any lessons planned with the nine string? I mean, I got to do something, I think I got to do something. I'm figuring out what to what to do. Uh, how do I find the first acts? Yeah, like I said, I mean, I, I started looking for them. Um, I've got my first one probably in 2012 or so, um, which I bought brand new after the custom shop had closed. And I reached out to one of the guys who was um, in the custom shop to see if there were any left over. And they actually had two left over that were unfinished as husks. And so I got my hands on the last two that were ever made and then kind of proceeded to hunt for them. And made a lot of content, obviously, as I was getting the channel started. That was really my my original DC6 was my main guitar for the channel. And uh, and so I've made a lot of content on the internet um, with these DC6 guitars. And so now they tend to find me. It's true. I get, uh, I got both of the, um, trying to think of how I've found them all. Like, so, like I said, my, my black one that you guys have seen me play with the white pinstripes, I bought that new. I bought that from the custom shop after the custom shop was closed. 
Um, and then I had a matte black one that I that was from the same guys. They were they had both of them, and at the time I just bought one, not thinking, hey, I should buy both. I just bought one, and then the second one got finished and put up on eBay, and so I bought that. Um, and that was a cool one. That one was different though, a bit thinner and a lot lighter. I think it was uh, um, a different type of wood, and uh, so that was an interesting one because it was it was a lot thinner than the other ones I've had. Um, and then uh, the Pete Adams, both of the Pete Adams ones, uh, the you've seen like the fish, the one with the fish inlays, and then the one with the, uh, it's like a tobacco burst. And that one, the fish inlay one is like a gold, transparent gold burst. That one I got from, I guess, one of Pete's brother's friends bought those both of those guitars off him when he wanted to sell them and put them immediately in storage and never played them. He was a bassist, but he, he wanted those guitars. So he bought those and he kept them for years. And then he one day made a comment on one of my videos. And then I said, hey man, hit me up if you ever want to sell them. And then he reached out saying he wanted to sell them. Um, the black one I have, the gloss black double bound one, it's bound front and back like Les Paul Custom. Again, so, just someone I know on Instagram uh, had reached out and him and I had talked before and he found one on eBay. Uh, and bought it and had it for a few months and then decided to sell it to me. So I bought that one and I restored that one actually. That one had had a ton of mods and I just had a lot of, I had collected some first act pickups. I had an extra for some reason, um, I had an extra pick guard that was from my original first act. And when I got it, I got the pick guard changed to hang off the body like a Les Paul rather than off the pickups. And so I had that one sitting around and, um, and so, um, so no, Barry, I don't have the husks. I bought the last two, like I bought, I, I paid it. There were two husks left when the shop closed down and I, I had them finish them out, um, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it is. I mean, I don't know. I've owned, um. Yeah, I've owned six DC6s. I've owned six DC6s, this DC9, and a DC12. And I would I would wager that total of all the DC guitars, there were probably 50 made. Um, and, and probably only like 30 DC6s or something like that. That's at least what I've been told by um, Kelly Butler, who used to run the custom shop. Yeah. The dice could be a play on DC. I've heard someone say that. Sure. The neck joint um, is just a lot like if you've ever played a Warlord or seen a Woodright, Woodright Warlord. It's it's very similar. It's got a big heel. And this thing weighs 9.1 pounds. People were asking that. 9.1 pounds, 25 and a half inch scale. I don't know if that's close up enough, but that's kind of what the neck looks like. But they're heavy guitars, but they have amazing sustain and they play awesome. Typically they weigh, most of my first acts weigh nine and a half to 10 pounds. Yeah, the DC-12 is a, was an absolutely beautiful guitar. Um, the one strange thing about it, like I've said before, is the body was scaled down to be like 90% of, of a regular body for some reason. So it was thin and just everything was smaller. Like if you sat it on top, it just was a smaller guitar profile wise and looked like the whole thing had been shrunk and, uh, shrunk all around, you know, thinner and just smaller, which was an odd choice because then the neck is even longer and more hardware, you know, you've got 12 tuning machines and it, it, it was the only guitar like this that I had that wasn't like perfect balance. The upper fret access is better than a Les Paul, but not as quite as good as an SG, I would say. You know, you can get up there, but you still have a big neck heel, you know, it's it's just a fat bit of guitar. So it's, it's not quite as, as good as an SG, but it's better than a Les Paul, I would say.
But yeah, the 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 quilted like bluish. It, it's really so in photo in photos under under any sort of yellow light, it looks purple. But really, it's a blue guitar with a white binding. The the twelve string, super cool, absolutely crazy looking guitar. But uh, anyways, I think that's that'll be it for today. I just wanted I felt bad last week that we uh, we unboxed this thing and I couldn't let you guys hear how it sounded. But um, really cool. I'll definitely be using it in a lesson. I think uh, got to figure out. It, it's hard to those fucking high on fire riffs. The later, especially Death Is This Communion and on, he's just like the riffs are just crazy. You know, I was trying to remember some of them there, and it takes forever to remember how to play them because they're so long, sliding all over the fucking place. That dude just writes some awesome riffs. Um, but yeah, um, thank you guys for hanging out again. And uh, hopefully hopefully this was this was fun to hear for everybody. But uh, yeah, we will, uh, we will be back again. I hope everybody has a good Sunday. Take it easy, guys.